What does it mean to be an expert in League of Legends? To some, it might mean hitting Challenger. To others, it might be going pro and making it onto a team. Or you might even argue that you don't need a rank at all, instead opting for metrics like Champion Mastery or Hours Played. There really isn't an agreed upon way for gauging mastery, besides the fact that when you watch an expert, they make the game look effortless. I've hit Challenger, I've had success in competitive, have well over 10,000 hours in the game, and millions of mastery points. But to me, there are only three things that you need to have in order to master League of Legends, and it's none of these things. Today, I'm going to be showing you just what it takes to get to the top, and how you can learn to be an expert. And remember to check out our site, skillcap.com, for world-class guides which are backed by skill insurance. It's insurance, but for your rank. If you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using our service, you get your money back. So check us out after this. Okay, so the first requirement to become an expert at League of Legends, and admittedly, the one that most players do have some grasp on, is Champion Mastery. And no, I don't mean the points you get from just grinding games. Things like understanding your limits and knowing when you can secure a kill or survive a fight, or how to pilot your character in an effective manner with regards to skill usage and even standard game-wide mechanics, they all apply here. As an example, maintaining proper distance between me and Zeri to land skill shots and autos while simultaneously dodging her auto attacks require proper spacing and movement, and falls under this category. A large amount of mastery doesn't come from anything pertaining to a specific champion, but instead is a greater understanding of the mechanics of the game itself. Something like this is only possible due to hours and hours of practice of cancelling auto attacks as soon as the cast animation finishes. When we first start playing the game, or even years into it, movement can still be wildly unoptimized. Something like taking Scuttle Crab can take incredibly long just because of this, or players will just miss kills altogether because they didn't click the ground in a particular way. It's a fundamental that when mastered does just make the game look and feel more smooth without anyone really noticing. Learning how to quickly cancel wind down animations, animation cancel abilities into each other, flash buffering, and more, and actually using them in games is something that is flashy at low levels of play, but expected in higher brackets. The less flashy stuff can be quite simple, yet not taken advantage of. Using the shortest possible paths towards locations on the map through usage of wall hops or blast cones, and understanding of mechanics like vision, they're absolutely massive. Choosing routes that are less likely to be warded, or approach lanes at the optimal angle to cut off escape, are underappreciated skills that make all the difference. When I'm doing challenger earpiece coaching, I'm essentially telling someone exactly how to play, but some things are obviously too difficult to fully explain in the moment. Even with the right game plan, you can see all the missing pieces that cause things to go wrong in this example when I tell my student to gank top. Hugging the wall and choosing to use decoy to go over terrain and cut off Timo's escape route would already set up this play for higher success. And once Wukong gets into range to use Q, he could continue clicking down while autoing and using that Q, while holding his E to use it when he needs to reclose the gap. But early skill usage and suboptimal movement cause him to miss out on the kill here. These sorts of interactions would likely be understood and carried out by a more experienced player just through intuition alone. However, it is only after failing these kills hundreds and hundreds of times that you begin to see just how you can actually start to secure them. But because of how biased our own perspectives are towards, well, ourselves, this is often the first category that gets developed the fastest when learning, but the next layer has to deal with the exact opposite ideas and gets developed a lot slower. Further mastery comes from also understanding your opponent's goals, win conditions, and their mistakes. Once you have control of your own character and understanding of game mechanics, the game becomes a lot more about interacting with your opponents instead. You know how to play out fights and how to approach them now, but the real questions come after that. Let's look at this Karma example that I played recently. As I'm returning bot from a mid lane roam, you can already see a lot of the self-focused level 1 concepts in play. I'm hugging the wall to get the shortest route, and when I get there, I pink the bush to deny vision. From here, I'm able to weave in and out and dodge all incoming damage while still landing poke. I know that I do not win auto attack trades with Jin, and the 2v1 makes it impossible to fight Swain, so with good spacing, I'm just doing what I can. Even though I'm competent at playing fights out, I need an actual sign to take the fight in the first place and commit. On this frame, I get a very important trigger that things may go in my favor very quickly. See if you can spot it. 
I can clearly see that Jin and Swain are facing in opposite directions. Just like me and you and everyone that has ever touched this game, your opponents will make mistakes. And recognizing those triggers and immediately looking for the punish is the signal of level 2 mastery. In this position, I'm looking to inject myself in the space that Jin and Swain will create by walking in opposite directions. Unlike in a MOBA like Dota or many other games for that matter, there is no turn radius or turn time. If a character is faced in a certain direction, I can know for a fact that their last input command is in the direction that the character model is facing. Now, you can kind of think about this like a sandwich. If Jin and Swain collapse on me, I'm going to be fighting a 2v1, but if Misfortune and I collapse on Swain, it'll be a 2v1 in our favor instead. With good spacing, I can ensure that I won't allow myself to get collapsed on, and now it's just fishing for the opportunity to exploit my opponents and seeing how much of a mistake they're going to make. Turns out it was a pretty big one. Just through the recognition of this trigger alone, we can turn an otherwise negative situation into a positive. Because they walk separate ways, we're able to force Swain's stopwatch and blow his flash before Jin can regroup, which is a very obvious advantage. Looking for signals that allow you to punish your opponents comes with time, but it's definitely a harder skill to master. You need to be aware of what your opponent should be doing in a situation in order to recognize that they're doing anything wrong, and you also have to be in control of your own character to a certain degree to punish it. Both of these are rather difficult and lack feedback, which is a critical part of actually learning games. Why is feedback important, you ask? Just because we die or get a kill, it doesn't mean that something went wrong or right. Scoreline, CS, and other metrics aren't exactly able to tell you if you're making mistakes or not. So what is? How do we get feedback? Unfortunately, we can't really do that on our own. You have to be able to have the foresight to understand how other situations would have played out. If you made one choice, what would the other possible options have resulted in? So what exactly can you do to gain foresight? At the end of the day, in order to be an expert, you will need lots of time. Thousands of games need to be played, but not all time is spent equally. Focus practice where you draw conclusions from your games is a very different realm than playing normals with your friends and pulling up a rom-com on your second monitor. This is why some players can have 10,000 games and be lower ranked than those that have fractions of that number. In that focus practice, seeing patterns and results from different situations enables you to create foresight. If you've seen something before, you're going to have a better idea of the end results than if you have never experienced it. The only thing you can really do is just keep playing. Obviously guides and coaching can help connect the dots and jumpstart your recognition, but you still have to actually play to form that in your games to be able to use the ideas you learn. The third layer is usually the skill that gets learned last, as it's what we tend to focus the least on. Let me show you a few examples to explain. In this game I am massively ahead, and as I'm invading to try and steal away some camps, the enemy mid laner decides to try and fight me. Is Silas trying to fight me a good or bad decision for While I could just straight up kill him, this is actually a decent play from him, because the aim is to distract me. Level 1 implies that I focus on myself in this fight. Level 2 diverts my attention to Silas, as I focus on him. So the existence of a level 3 should have already given this away to some of you. I'm supposed to also be paying attention to my teammates as well. I immediately ignore the Silas and focus on the bigger threat at hand, which is my teammate that can't defend himself. If I had ignored Velkaz, I'd essentially be creating two 1v1s, mine versus Silas, which I would win, but Velkaz would stand no chance against the level 10 Graves. If I fight Graves, we at the very least get a 1 for 0 play, but if I ignore him, we're most likely getting a 1 for 1 instead if I fall for Silas's bait. Contrary to conventional beliefs, teammates are rarely your focus. They may be the target of flame a lot of times and maybe a focus then, but it's because you're usually assuming that they'll be operating in a way that you don't have to think about them. This kind of play comes up a lot. While we do land all of our damage onto a squishy target in Seraphine, which initially baits me to want to go for the kill, by doing so I would leave my mid laner to fight a 1v1, an almost identical situation to the last example. Instead, I turn onto the lead to peel my Velkaz, and then afterwards I have the ability to chase down and continue this fight. This snap decision included all three levels. I'm considering my own chase potential and ability to help in each part of the fight, my opponent's options, and also my teammates' options as well. This isn't the only kind of fight that this is good for either. In this clip, I'm looking to try and invade, but the second I realize what my Udyr is doing, I need to change my plan. 
He puts himself in a spot where Kha'Zix and Echo can collapse, and he would be forced to fight a TD1. However, I can immediately remedy this issue by instead creating a situation where we collapse on the Kha'Zix instead. This is very similar to how I punished the Swain from earlier, except I'm recognizing that mistake before it happens, and fixing it before it becomes an issue. By running at Kha'Zix, we can force a fight into an advantageous position for our team, and avoid a nightmarish situation. Once again, recognition of how to play around teammates can solve a lot of issues. All three of these ideas are the core of what creates mastery in League. 1. Self-mastery. 2. Understanding of opponents' play and their goals. And 3. Coordination around your teammates. Obviously, there are so many layers to each of these levels, but mastery comes through refinement of each one. Being conscious of them in your games and asking yourself at each moment if you're considering each is a surefire way to speed up the long journey of improvement in this incredibly deep and complex game. Alright, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about Skillcapped. We offer a 5 division rank up guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us, we've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week with over 2,000 guides curated into over 270 courses. No one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell over 1,100 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all your questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.